Hey, it's Jason from EnlightenedWebMastery.com. Today we're going to talk about WordPress workflow and specifically how to stop spam bots cold with bad behavior. So, what is bad behavior? Well, bad behavior is a plugin for WordPress. What it does is it stops people from behaving badly on your website. So, inside this training, you're going to learn how to stop spam bots cold using the bad behavior plugin. Now this is also going to serve as a great first step in locking down your blog while preventing automated attacks, denial of service attacks, and thus increasing your bandwidth and avoiding high CPU utilization, which will also save you money and save you from having to have potential downtime. This entire process will take less than 60 seconds to implement and it will save you so much time and heartache. So. Read the article at enlightenedwebmastery.com, watch this video, follow the steps, implement it, and make sure to leave me a comment below with your thoughts and feedback. And if you enjoy this kind of workflow-oriented video, be sure to check out WordPress Workflow at wordpressworkflow.com, where I've created an entire set of trainings that walk you through the entire process of going from beginning to end with everything covered with comprehensive workflows. So let's go ahead and talk about what this article is about. All right, you may be thinking, sounds great, but what exactly is it? Well, what I said before may seem like a lot, but it's just the tip of the iceberg as far as this plugin is concerned. If your blog has been up for any time, then you know the problem with spam bots, but if not, let me share an all too familiar scenario with you. There are many different ways to make money on the internet. One of them is by getting people to come to your website and buy stuff from you, which of course is all well and good. However, some people would prefer to cheat and try and get people to visit their websites by attacking yours. Now I'm not meaning to imply anything malicious, it's just they'll spam your site trying to get people that visit your site to click the links and go to their website. They do this by getting people to visit a certain website or to view a certain page. Each time this is done, the person who sent you there can get anywhere from a few pennies to a dollar, which is why you usually are bombarded with hundreds of pop-ups or pop-unders and all this other crazy nonsense when you click one of those little spammy links. The way this works is they download a tool, it parses some list, and displays a bunch of websites that contain a certain per page rank or is relevant to their market. They then load up the tool to automatically spam your site among many others in hopes of getting visitors to visit their website. The approach I mentioned above is one of the least invasive ways of doing this, and these people typically mean you no harm. They just want your visitors so they can get a little bit of extra money. Now the problem with the approach that I just mentioned is it takes a little bit longer to do, and most spammers are too busy spamming to take an extra 30 seconds or so to target their market, much less leave a unique message on your website. So what they do is after parsing the list, they click a little button that sends out automated comments that they've already put into the tool on all the blogs that are on that list. They just click one button and your site, and possibly even your friends, is now loaded with comments for Viagra and many other medicines or other such websites that people probably don't really care too much about anyway. But their hope is to get you to click that link or your visitors to click that link so they can get a few pennies for causing the people to visit those sites. So besides the fact that your site gets hammered with fake comments that you need to delete or any other thing, it also annoys your visitors if any of these things gets through, possibly causing them to leave. It also wastes bandwidth and wastes CPU usage. Now since website hosting isn't free, and some people use lower end hosts, whether on like a shared hosting server or whatever, even if they're on a higher end hosting server and they're getting thousands of visitors a day, it costs money for people to keep hammering your website, trying to gather information and all that, and that's all the spam bots are doing, is they're just trying to, they're accessing your database, they're causing your server to run, and it's increasing your bandwidth and increasing your CPU usage while also slowing down access to your real visitors, your paying customers, or the people that you really want to be getting on your website. So what you need to do is avoid all this stuff because it can lead to increased bills, wasted bandwidth, and even worse, it can stop the people you care about from visiting your site. I mean, can you blame them? If your site's full of spam or slow due to spammers knocking at your door, your site may even be offline. So now you may be thinking, wow, I did not know that. How can I stop this? Well, this part is really, really simple, and it takes less than 60 seconds to do. 
If you're not familiar with the new automated approach to installing plugins, what I want you to do is check out my video or article titled How to Install WordPress Plugins. You can find this on YouTube or on my website at enlightenedwebmastery.com. Just in the search bar up at the top, type in Install WordPress Plugins, and that should take you to the article. So assuming that you've read the article or watched the video and you have everything set up, let's proceed with installing this and getting your site protected right away. The first thing I need you to do is log into your dashboard. Scroll down a little bit and on the left side you're going to see an option titled plugins. I want you to click add new. Now if you can't see the add new option you need to click that little arrow which you can find right here and that will drop down the menu and allow you to click the add new option. Once you're on that page, the next thing I want you to do is change the type, which is right here, from term to author. And then type in Ferris, F-I-R-A-S, and click the search button. Now, at the time of me creating this video, WordPress would not show me bad behavior when I typed that in as a term. So what I did was I chose an author that had the shortest name, and that enables us to go ahead and use the automatic feature. So after you click the button, you're going to see a list of options. Now currently at the top, you're going to see bad behavior. And if that's still the option, choose that. If not, you may need to scroll down a little bit and then click the install option. After this screen, you're going to see a little pop-up that tells you a little bit more about the plugin. So from here, you can see about the installation, you can see all the notes, you can see the average rating, and you can see the last day is updated. So what you're going to want to do now is click the little button at the top that says install now. Once you do this, you're going to need to input your FTP information. Now I want you to make sure you note that this is not your WordPress login information. This is not the admin or any other setting that you have set for your default login. This is the one you set up when you created your FTP account when you first created your hosting account. The thing you logged into to install WordPress provided it wasn't a one-click install. So put in your host name and then type in your FTP username as well as your FTP password, making sure that the connection type is still set at FTP. Once you're through with that, you can go ahead and click proceed. Next, what you need to do is activate the plugin. After you see this screen load up and you see the option on the bottom that says actions activate plugin, you need to go ahead and click that button. It could take a little while for this stuff to get set up and installed, so don't click off the page or change anything until you see the option to activate the plugin. So go ahead and activate it. And next, what I need you to do is go back to your dashboard inside your panel on the left hand side, scroll down until you find the settings option. Again, you may need to click the little arrow button off to the right of it. And what I want you to choose is the settings for bad behavior. That's going to take you to a screen similar to the following. The default settings are really great and I highly recommend just leaving them alone unless you have certain instances that's going to call for you to change those. But the one thing I do recommend changing is display statistics and blog footer. If you leave this option checked, which is already set by default, on your home page at the bottom on your footer, you're going to have a little menu or a little line of text there that says bad behavior and stuff like that. So if you don't want that, you're going to want to uncheck that. So if you decide to uncheck that, what you need to do is click the update button, the update button when you scroll down a little bit, and then you're done. So inside this training, we went over how to stop spam bots dead in their tracks before they even get the chance to cause you any kind of harm. We did this, again, by installing the Bad Behavior plugin. I showed you step-by-step -step the exact 10-step process needed to install this plugin. Now, as you know, this process takes less than 60 seconds to implement, and the benefits are massive. This is one of those small change, big benefits kind of things. So I want you to go out and install this plugin right now on your blog. Click the button below and send this article to your friends or send a video to your friends, stumble it, dig it, whatever you need to do so you can help your other friends and other bloggers protect themselves. Now, you're not only going to be stopping spam bots, but you also stop automated security hacking programs, denial of service attacks, increased CPU uses on your server, as well as additional bandwidth uses. So go out and implement this right now, and be sure to leave me a comment below with your thoughts and feedback. Now, if you found this training helpful, I have a new course that covers this much more in detail called WordPress Workflow, which you can find out at WordPressWorkflow.com. It's a comprehensive set of trainings detailing specific workflows to achieve a certain outcome. And you should also be sure to subscribe to my newsletter at enlightenedwebmastery.com where each month I send out very valuable training that you can get nowhere else for absolutely free. So again, this is Jason from enlightenedwebmastery.com and I'll talk to you soon.